today on Judge Faith. Who's twisting the truth in court? We're having a, a, a breakdown in communication. She owes me three days of storage. When we were leaving, he agreed he was going to let me come back to the house to get the rest of my stuff. I don't know why this went negative. I do not like when people come into my courtroom and look me right in my face and lie to me. And that is what you did. Faith Jenkins. Her distinguished legal career began when she graduated first in her law school class. She quickly became a tough New York City prosecutor and then a preeminent legal analyst on cable news. And now she's the judge in her own courtroom. Her cases are real and her rulings are final. She is Judge Faith. Plaintiff Jennifer Huddock says her former landlord evicted her without notice and is refusing to return her belongings. She's suing for the costs of her personal property. She's accompanied in court by James Barnett. Defendant Trey Jackson says the plaintiff was legally evicted when she didn't follow the rules of the house. He's countersuing for back rent and fees. Remain seated and come to order. Court is now in session. The Honorable Judge Faith Jenkins presiding. Your Honor, this case is Huddock versus Jackson. Thank you, Barbara. Jennifer Huddock, mm -hmm. you are suing the defendant for $3,000 for costs incurred for an illegal eviction. Right. And you are countersuing Mr. Jackson for $4,065 for back rent, late fees, storage costs, utilities, and administrative costs? That's correct. Okay. We'll start with you, Ms. Huddock. Can you tell me what kind of place it was? Um, it was a property where they rented all the rooms to different people okay that most of the rooms they were all there was four rooms mm -hmm. mine was the very bottom it was a three level house all the rooms were rented to like college kids okay they would throw big so parties you rented and, a room in the house right and who else lived with you at that time with me mm -hmm. my two daughters i have a well 10 year old and a seven year old at the time okay so they lived in the room with you right and okay. then he was coming and he was staying quite regularly but he wasn't living there and who are you sir i i'm her boyfriend Okay, Mr. Barnett? Yes. Okay. And I, I was staying there. I would go there just at night and sleep with, you know, and then go home in the morning. I had my own place. Um, this is all in one room? Yeah, it was It was like a garage-sized room, like a double-car garage-sized room. So you were living in this room right. with your two daughters. How much were you paying in rent? I was paying $800 a month. And did you have a, a lease agreement with the defendant? No, never did. Okay, but at some point, you come to an agreement with him. Not a written lease, but an oral lease. Right. Okay, go ahead. Okay, everything went fine, and then Trey told me at one time that he was only going to move in people who were, like, family-oriented, make it like a family home, um, people who had kids, you know. Okay, because you have two kids. daughters. Right. You're telling me that there was a problem, problem with, with the, the other people living in the unit. With So you were in a month-to-month, -month, correct? Right, yeah. So why didn't you move if you didn't like living there? Um, I didn't have anywhere to go. I didn't have any money to move. We've been living there. I've been she was there living for there, a yeah. year and a half. Mm -hmm. With you know, not one complaint, I, not one problem. Not one. And then th that's that key. Okay, so tell me what he said. Tell We've me, been tell living me there. what's going on, sir. When I acquired the property um, as the new owner in transition, um, I have a property management company that works under my enterprise. We buy property, and then my property management company manages the property. The former owner placed all these tenants. Right. She didn't make good decisions, and I'm gonna give her that. Okay, as far as the placement. There were college kids there. It's near a college. So when I came in, she was almost like a hostage situation as far as being able to move around the house with her kids. Right. I get that. So when she said, Trey, can you come over and do a pop-up visit and see what I'm going through? I did that. The tenants that was there, that was college kids, they was doing Facebook parties, 100, 200 people show up, right. disturbing the whole neighborhood. So I was what like, What is okay. a Facebook party? Facebook party. Oh, where they post on, Facebook, post on Facebook, there's a party at this whoever address and everybody comes yes. over. Come. Okay. And this is a resident. This is not a hall. Yeah. Right. So it was out of control. I did a pop-up visit. I came in a uh, dining area, which she was not allowed to come in because they took it over. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I seen things on the table that was very disturbing. Uh, like what? Paraphernalia. Like oh, like drug paraphernalia. Drugs. Okay. So if I was those kids, her daughter's dad, uncle, brother, you I would have I I I lost it. Okay. So I stayed professional. I did the process through the courts, got them out. Okay. I was championing her seven-year-old, ten-year-old daughter. Right. That's what it was really about. Yeah. I don't know why this went negative. Coming up, Trey calls the couple out in court, but Jennifer fights back. He was there every night. 
And uh, is she not supposed to have overnight guests? I have rules right here that she signed off. No, I did not sign anything. Because you never returned it. I have it. Because you, exactly. you didn't give it to me until you the last month before it, I moved. Because you have the last Kansas month before intention. I moved. And Judge Faith gets real. Let me tell you something. Don't come in this courtroom and pretend to know anything about me or what I say or don't say. Plaintiff Jennifer Huddock says her former landlord refused to return her belongings after evicting her illegally. She's suing for the cost of her personal property. Defendant Trey Jackson says if the plaintiff had just followed the house rules, she wouldn't have had a problem. He is countersuing for back rent and fees. Why did you evict the plaintiff? Mainly because of him and his presence at the facility. What happened? He was there every night from the hours this is not hearsay. This is what she told me to my face. <laughs> he comes between 11 p.m. and 6 a.m. Right. He's not on the lease. And he, uh, is she not supposed to have overnight guests? She, no. I was only allowed, Never allowed was on them to have rule about overnight. It at all. I have rules right here that she signed off. No, I did not sign anything. Because you never returned it. I have it. it. You, and exactly. you didn't give it to me you until the last never month before it, I moved. Because you have the last month before intentions. I moved. intentions. That's why you never returned okay, it. Okay, scandalous So you didn't want... Let's talk about that. Her I'll allow everyone in overnight. the house one night guests per week. Wrong. Okay. For sanitary reasons, safety Wrong. reasons. Okay. And you're sanitary saying that he's staying there every night. Advantage. When I found that out through complaints of the new tenant, who she got into. Were you staying there every night, sir? Yeah. Well, practically. Almost. You okay. know, and, and like I said, I he I didn't have nothing. I did never took showers there. I, I have my own place. Never used the kitchen. Never, never used the kitchen. Anything. Never used. Yeah, didn't have no clothes. I use there, every nothing. day. You don't use. Didn't no do memories. his laundry there. You didn't take a <laughs> come at. He might have went to the bathroom. Okay, yeah. that's utilities. Okay. That's anyway. what he's All right, go ahead, sir. That's what he's told me before. Okay, that's go he's ahead. Saying. Okay, so she, in her mind, her loop de do mind, that's not living there because if he's just using the facilities as a restroom, then he's okay. not officially living mm -hmm. there. Okay, so right. at what point do you get to file for a notice of eviction? When uh, she was breaking all the rules, I gave her a three day <laughs> covenant. So you say that the eviction was unlawful, but I have paperwork here from the courts and from the sheriff. I mean, he didn't lock you out. The sheriff, sheriff came locked and locked me out. you okay, out. Yeah. So uh, the eviction, by law, he can't do that unless you've been given notice and a writ of possession has been issued. Okay. So what's your issue? Why do you say it's unlawful? Yes, I, I don't believe that I was served right. I don't you, believe that you I were, was. You were, ma'am. You I were. Went and I, okay. I read the paperwork okay. thoroughly. Okay. You went... There was a notice of eviction filed, right. and you were notified. Right. You went he down came to court to me and and told me I could stay. Did you not? Until ma August twelfth. Ma'am, you okay. got notice that an eviction had been filed. Right. You went down to court, and you paid the court right. rent right. in the amount of eight hundred dollars, right. and it was stayed for thirty, 30 days, days, which would have put me out on the thir only thirty days, days only. It okay? would have put me out on the thirty. You got another notice that the sheriff would come. Because this is how the law works. I never got and another notice. In five days, your things are, will be put you. out, and that's what happens when the sheriff comes. Okay. The sheriff, the sheriff comes gets and posts a court can I, order. Can I tell you something? The sheriff does not get an order from the defendant. The sheriff gets an I, order I get from court. I understand that. Okay. I understand that. And he comes to me again. He says he's going to pull it. I believe him. Okay. Did you tell her? Did you tell her that you weren't going to evict her? No, no. no I never told her. This I was last pull time, no. when she no. was actually evicted by the sheriff. Did you tell her that you were not going to evict her? No, I didn't because she put in a stay of execution in May. Right. So when After she did that. that, she let me know that she's a smart girl. She knows how to deal with the law and stop things. So I said, okay, I'll deal with that. You holding up my rent money because you got to pay it to the court. And I had to wait four weeks for me to get that check. And she put it in the former owner's name, so I really had to wait. So oh, she knows wow. how to deal with the court. So what happened after the 30 days? After the 30 days, uh, her rent was due back up. And the 30 days of uh, eviction kicked back in. Right. It's her job, not for me to call and say, hey, please hold my rent again by going down to the court. It's her job to go back to the court and say, hey, I need more time to find he a job. Because she went to the court and the excuse in. that she gave the judge was, my ankle's broken, Your Honor, I need more time to move out. It and wasn't. That, that's when the 30 day stay came in. It, it came back in. me out on the 13th of June. Mm -hmm. Okay. Why would they? The sheriff come and lock me out. It is not an unlawful eviction. Okay. When the sheriff comes, oh, and, I get and that. Part. We already know that the eviction process was started. You went down to court. You had a 30 day stay. Right. Shortly that. after that, the sheriff came and you are evicted. I get that part. Okay. okay. What's the no, what's the next okay. issue? I, the next issue is you said that he locked you out and didn't let you get your things because he you are allowed by property. law by 15 days. You are required by law 15 days to keep your property for 15 days. During that time period, you can come and get your property. Okay. Okay. What happened? Try, you know this is a real judge, try. right? She knows what she's yeah, talking about. Okay. You know that, let's, right? Let's play, Trey. Okay. Let's pray. Let's this play. is not play-play. Okay. 
Okay. So I what tried happened? to go get my property, okay? I went back the very same day that I was locked out, if you remember, okay? I went back there with him and my daughters and a friend of mine. We all went up there to go get my stuff. He told me I can go in and get whatever I could. I went in, later he comes in and he tells me, okay, you got 15 minutes. So it was like, hurry up, hustle, get out, you know, whatever. Did I give you only 15 minutes? Don't lie. No, 20 just, minutes. I gave you an hour what? and 20 minutes. Oh my God, he gave, anyways. He gave us 40, about 45 minutes and then about no, then he said, half of it was we got 20 more minutes left. So Okay, so you had so, 45 hour. minutes, yeah, so was 20 an minutes, hour. an hour to an get hour. your things. Coming up on Judge Faith, a shocking statement stuns the courtroom. She ran up to me. She said, Trey, my kids are crying. I was locked out by the sheriff. That's not my problem. She said, well, we both parents. You should know how it is. I said, the difference between me and you is that, yeah, we both parents, <laughs> but I would never let my kids be homeless. Is that not rude? She turned That's red. So she ran up to my face, Your Honor, mm -hmm. and said, you know what, Trey? You ain't gonna be nothing but the N-word the rest of your life. No, I did not, Your Honor. Look at me. You can't I... even say that with a straight face. Did you call him that? Plaintiff Jennifer Huddock says her former landlord refused to return her belongings after evicting her illegally. She's suing for the cost of her personal property. Defendant Trey Jackson says if the plaintiff had just followed the house rules, she wouldn't have had a problem. He is countersuing for back rent and fees. So up until this point, this is... Accurate. Right. When we were leaving, he agreed he was going to let me come back to the house to get the rest of my stuff. No. Okay? I went back to go to the house up there to go get the rest what of the What day did you go back? Um, I don't know uh, what day it was. Three like. days later. It was on a Friday. Yeah, it was on a Friday. I think it was on the 10th. I agree with that. By the way, what was the real reason for the eviction? All of these problems in addition to, was it non-payment of rent as well? It was non-payment of rent. Okay, and that I'm was... I'm just going to leave it there. Okay, non-payment of rent. When you evict someone mm -hmm. lawfully, by law, you have to give them a time to come and get their things within the 15 days. Yeah, I understand So if that. she showed Still back up, it. you say if you say there are damages to the property, mm -hmm. there are other ways you go about getting right. restitution for right. those damages. Right. But if she comes back and you tell her to come back and she's trying to get her things, you can't stop her from going in and then charge her storage for keeping her things there. May I have the list of the property you say was yes. left? And do you okay. have any proof? Do you yes. have any proof that this I property have, I have... was left... In I don't have your... proof he has all of my property. Do you still have... Where's the, where's the stuff? Oh, some not, of it, I'm... Your Honor, I went up there. He told me I can go up there and pick up my stuff on a Friday. I went up there to go get it. I could get, go up there and get my mattress is what he told me. So what happened when she, does she start calling, trying to get her yeah. property? Well, we have a, a, a breakdown no, in communication. Not she owes me not three days of storage when she came back. She did not have any payment for that. So I do not have to give her anything if she don't have the three days. It's I just wanted the three days minimum. Do you have any proof that this property was left inside of your of Everything of your I unit? own, he has. I I was locked out by the sheriff. It's I don't know what else kind you of proof a I need to have. Phone? She you was have a in the home and they locked her out. It was her daughter in his home, so she has everything was left where, behind. Where is the property now? The property is in storage. No, okay. half I, of I, it might I, be in storage. I half want of it her was on to have her stuff broken. Back. I even brought family pictures that she cried to me about. I brought them with me today because I want you. her to have those. Thank you. Well, okay. you're welcome from the so, demon. So, so here's good. the so here's the deal. So she owes you three days of storage, and that's it. That's Nothing all, else. That's it. So I if she that, didn't have the is, money that day. sir, yeah. listen to okay. what I'm saying. Thirty dollars, ten dollars, whatever. I understand she didn't have the money that day, but she is only required to pay for those days. Yes. That from the date that she was evicted, up until the date that she came I, and I tried to get her things. I agree. What else do you have? I, yes. This is what I have. This what is else what, do you have? What else I have is the day she, I denied her to get her stuff when she wouldn't sign the release, she ran up to me. She said, Trey, my kids are crying. Uh, they want their toys and you won't let them have them. I said, that's not my problem. She said, well, we both parents. You should know how it is. I said, the difference between me and you is that, yeah, we're both parents, <laughs> but I would never let my kids be homeless. That's the difference. She took five seconds. Right? Is that not rude? She turned That's red. So rude. She ran up to my face, Your Honor, mm -hmm. and said, you know what, Trey? You ain't gonna be nothing but an N-word the rest of your life. And when I say N-word, it wasn't G-A, it was E-R, like we was in 1951. Did you call him look, that? Look at me. No. No, I did not, Your Honor. Look at me. You can't I, even say that with a straight face. I can't. I can't. No, I never can't. called you that, Trey. You never I don't call me that? anybody that. After she called me the N-word, she was about five inches away from my face, spitting on me and everything. Oh. I was sitting in my truck. <laughs> then she goes. Truck. You weren't even in a truck. Then she goes, Your Honor. Oh, okay, I'm sorry, I was in my car. Oh. Oh. Then she goes, Your Honor, for the rest of your life, no matter what kind of cars you got, no matter what property you have, you can forever be a big lip N-word. You so are such a... I was like... Oh, my God. If my I girls were here... I could take the N-word, because I've been called worse, here. but big lips, if, that drew the line. 
I drew the line on that. Sexy lips, maybe, but no. I drew the line on that. And I have a voicemail to prove that, that she used that word. Okay, let me hear the voicemail. Because she's saying she, never, she doesn't use that word. She Let's uses that word. Let's hear it. She does not use it. I've been trying to get a hold of you. I've been blowing up your phone, and I know you know it, so I don't know why the f*** you continue to ignore me. Could you call me back? Could you, could you please? I would appreciate it, because you lied to me when you told me that you were going to cancel my eviction. You were just trying to get my money out of me, and then you were going to have the police come and f*** me out anyway. Mm -hmm. What a f weasel. Call me back. A weasel. No, you're not going to call me back, because I've been calling the game. It's cheap. What does the do? Back like here. Boom. Oh, there you go. Okay, I apologize then. I did say that. Then. No, you thought. I don't remember saying let, that. Let me, let, me say, let me tell you something. Wow. On your phone, there's a red button. Okay, it says I don't end. remember saying you that. You should practice pushing the red okay. button. Okay, Whatever. folks. Whatever. Just listen. Talk to the judge. I do please. not remember saying that, Your Honor. Well, you said it, it three times. Just on that okay, but talk to the judge. Obviously, please. I did. Right. Okay, but I, I do not remember. Do you remember how mad I was? That's besides the okay, point. Okay, it doesn't matter. Okay, this is a you business. just told you me, me okay, I apologize. you just testified before I did me just testify. that you didn't call him the N-word to his face. That you day. Said, that day. You no, said I did that not you recall. don't use that word. That and as a matter of fact, you said you never call I someone don't call the N-word. that word. And then five seconds later, he plays a voicemail. Jeez. And how many times did you say it? Two, three times? Three times, Yana. Is that, what never... you, is that what you is that what you refer to black people as? No, in it general, is not. Or no, just when not. you're upset with them? No, it is not. Of course, you. The were same black to landlord that, that gave you a hundred dollars cash 2013. How many for times Christmas? are you going to throw that in my face? Because landlords don't give; they take hundred dollars cash. Sir. The same one. I want you to stop. Cash, right. I want you to stop I talking I because I do not like this is wrong. when people come into my courtroom. Okay, I apologize. I do I'm not finished. I do not like when people come into my courtroom and look me right in my face and lie to me. I, and that is what you did. I if did you are not continuing, intentionally lie to you. Ma'am. Okay. Not only are you demonstrating to me right now that you use the most racist, derogatory, insulting, insensitive words towards black people, but you're demonstrating to me right now you cannot even admit it and tell me the My truth. My daughters are, are mixed. I don't care if your best friend is black. It doesn't matter. I heard you call him the N-word. Wow. It's ridiculous. I cannot stand. Because that is the number one thing people say. Oh, I'm not racist. I just, but you know what? I just My happen kids are, are biracial. I, I, mean, I, I what? don't, and what, so what? So you're not a racist because your kids are biracial? No, I'm a racist against him. I do not recall saying that. So he, so he's against the N-word, but character. no other black person. No, That's your excuse for that. And now, Judge Faith rules. I am just amazed that in 2014, people still talk like that and refer to black people mm. as the N-word. That's how they refer to each other, though. Yeah. I Excuse do me? Not That's how they talk. refer to each other. Oh, okay, so I see you're just as ignorant as your little girlfriend. Let me tell you something. Don't come in this courtroom and pretend to know anything about me or what I say or don't say. But let me inform you of something. There are a lot of black people that choose not to use that word because we understand the degrading and historical context from which it stems. It doesn't matter if Jay-Z says it. It doesn't matter if Kanye West says it. Stop making excuses for your own personal choices. And don't play dumb. You know that there's a difference in the context and that word being thrown around in some rap lyrics and when you use it in a hurling and insulting manner. Now, let me tell you why I'm dismissing your case. Because you're going to think that I'm dismissing your case because you're an ignorant racist. But that's not why I'm dismissing your case. I'm dismissing it because you're a liar. You came into court and you lied to me to my face. Judgment in this case is for the defendant in the amount of $4,065. And I'm ordering you to return her property. Judgment for the defendant.